Write in the mail, MS sex games from Japan. Collecting without fail, those shoot 'em ups, and that's the plan. He doesn't just collect them, he also codes them too. Join us and we'll go on electric adventures with you. Hey YouTube, Electric Adventures here for with my vlog and channel update for October 2019. Um, already getting uh, disturbingly close to Christmas. Um, it was an action-packed month. Um, there were a couple of things that I went to during the month. So one was a local thing called Brick Exhibition. It actually happens. Um, it happens every year. I don't necessarily go every year. Um, and it's a Lego Expo. Um, and oh, I've always um, been into Lego myself, um, and also a very big uh, Star Wars addict. Um, but there was it was interesting to go along and see um, a few new things and um, some of the things that have been there before, and see how some of the people's collections have grown. They're actually uh, notably it was possibly a little bit smaller than last time that I went, but there were still some quite um, interesting things on display. So. I thought I'd just give you a little taste of what was there with a little bit of a slideshow montage. So let's go do that now. Um, happened during the month, of course, was PAX 2019. Now, I've done a separate video on that, so um, uh, I'll put a link down below, and maybe if I can do it, put a little um, thing up there for you to go and click and have a look. But um, I took a bit of video footage, had a great time, and my one pickup I'm wearing is this T-shirt. It was only $5 at the EB Games store that was inside PAX. So that was pretty cool. Had lots of fun. My daughter joined me. Um, for the Sunday, um, my wife actually surprised her and found some cheap plane tickets and came over. Already had a hotel room, so there was, there was no other cost other than the, uh, the plane tickets. Um, and we bought her a pass to get into PAX, of course. Um, and she came in and, and very first time at PAX. It was also my wife's very first time at PAX. Uh, so they only came for the Sunday, and my daughter was mainly interested in Dungeons and Dragons, so she got to play her first game of Dungeons and Dragons. They also watched the Dungeons and Dragons live demo and um, um, and she got to play Beat Saber in 3D as well. So they had lots of good fun. I had lots of good fun. So go check out that video with a bit more detail. Now on to the other general um, other pickups of the month that I haven't made a video of. So this next thing so I've had quite a few visits by um, um, friends, some of them I haven't seen for quite a long time. So this is uh, actually one of my mates from back in the day. 
um, and uh, at his work they were quite literally throwing this, going to throw this out and it was going to end up in landfill. So it's quite a big box. It's a nano build NB1 uh, development kit. So, um, and I do realise I've left the menu inside, but there we go. But it does have this nice sheet that comes on top that shows you what you get inside. You guys can have a look at this. So, um, it's basically an FPGA development system. So FPGA are chips that basically allow you to program them to emulate other pieces of hardware. And there are two different FPGAs that come with it. An Altera Cyclone and the other one, it's got a name here. Um, of course it doesn't. Um, it comes with power supply and all sorts of things. I'll just get the main board out so you guys can see. The other one is a Z-Link Spartan. There we go. So it actually does come with two FPGAs. And the reason why they were getting rid of it is you need an older PC to talk to this particular development system. So here's the development board. So it comes in a little frame and case. It's designed, I suppose, for teaching and learning. Um, but it allows you to program these FPGAs and you've got various things to get uh, outputs and inputs from it. So I totally have not had one second to play, play with it and plug it in because I do need to hook it up to my um, you know, my older Windows XP PC. Uh, but I will most happily be doing that at some stage. Um, so, and I said, just dropped it off and said, here, you might as well have this rather than this end up on the tip. So, something I'm definitely interested in. I have never actually played with FPGAs myself, though. Um, so, it will be interesting having a bit of a go at that and learning what they're all about. And you can do a lot of things. So, a lot of the resurgence in um, a lot of the more recent, uh, you know, modern release consoles, other than your mini ones, um, are using FPGA so they can precisely emulate the original hardware. Um, so it is an uh, you know a topic that's fairly interested, and there are some actually like the MSX system is one of the first systems that was properly um, ha had a FPGA um, um, had an FPGA configuration developed for it, and that was actually released as a commercial thing called the One Chip MSX. Um, so I'll, at the very least, I might be able to get a um, you know a M MSX computer going using one of those FPGA so rather than it be chucked away and end up on landfill. Um, also got some more capacitors. Um, I, my um, friend Damien came over and I helped him get his Tutankham arcade board going um, and we noticed, well, and I do have several other Tutankhams, Time Pilots, um, Scrambles, Froggers, and Super Cobras, which are all Konami boards to fix, and they all have a very common set of, resist of um, capacitor values that you need. So I went and ordered a bulk of those, so I've got those ready. And um, now that the weather is starting to get a bit warmer, it is actually warm at the moment, although it's wet outside today. Um, I will be doing and getting in and repairing more arcade boards on that nice new um, electronic vents that I showed you guys last month. Um, also, one of the guys at work, um, who I didn't actually realise was into retro games as much as he was, he went ahead and bought an open source scan converter. So here's the unit here. Um, so what that does is it takes either RGB or component or VGA in and it converts it to HDMI. Um, and it has several modes in there that allows, so, and it locks onto the appropriate frequencies and allows you to, um, uh, you know, uh, double the resolution or, um, or multiply the resolution up so it scales better up to HDMI. Um, now, curiously enough, and I didn't realise this about these open source scan converters, they truly only accept RGB sources. And if you think about it, that's RGB, VGA is RGB. And the SCART, even though you can actually feed composite and S-video through a SCART socket, this device does not support that. And I didn't realise that. So it's not as useful to my particular setup as I thought it would be. 
Now I do have a particular problem that I have um, RGB for my SNES and my Genesis and I haven't been able to record those. I still haven't had much luck over here on this side of the room but I have managed to use this for quite a few of the computers. Um, so I probably will end up getting one but I'm, it's still I thought something like this might make the wiring a bit easier. Basically you'd have all your SCART switch and everything coming through here um, and then from there into a HDMI capture but unfortunately because it doesn't support composite I'm gonna have to feed the composite in using uh, a separate way which is a little bit annoying um, but I'll work it out, I'll work it out um, um, but I also did discover that the um, SCART to HDMI that I'm using here over this side of the room actually only supports composite and S video stuff and that's why the signals not getting um, through the, the RGB and maybe my capture card which is a um, Evermedia, I think. Uh, no, sorry, an Elgato Game Catcher HD, which is a slightly old one. It should actually be able to capture those um, RGB sources, but the, my um, my SCART to HDMI converter that I'm using down there is not actually letting those through. So. We will work out this combination of things. So uh, eventually I'll, I've actually got another uh, SCART to HDMI converter coming as well. I'm going to play with this a bit more and maybe I'll do a specific video on it. Now it comes with, um, well optionally you, you order a remote control, so this is a generic remote control. And they supply a sticker overlay as well. well that, I haven't taken that because this is not mine, it's only my, my friends at work and I'm only um, borrowing it. It comes with a power supply as well. So it does work but um, not exactly as I thought it was supposed to work, which is um, which slowed me down a little bit. Now, um, I also ordered some more SCART cables for my computers. Um, the SCART cable I was using for my Spectrum Plus 3 was a little dodgy, and it, um, I'm not 100% sure that that SCART cable is actually not for one of my MSX machines, so I ordered specifically a Spectrum Plus 3 cable, and while I was at it, because this is another thing that I haven't had a chance to make a video on, I got a Sinclair QL one. Um, and the Sinclair QL needs a specific one because it actually has another higher resolution mode. Um, so you can use the, the Spectrum Plus 3 cable when you get the normal mode out, but it, you, it, in its higher resolution mode it doesn't come out properly. So I'm hoping that this one it will display properly on the monitor. And yes, I do need to make a video on the Sinclair QL. I have recorded some footage but I need to actually sit down and play with it. And it does work too, which I'm very happy about. But more on that another time. Um, another little pickup, and these are purely for, uh, at my work, we actually have added a little recreational game area. Um, and one of the other guys has bought a Nintendo 64 in, um, and I didn't want to take all my Nintendo 64 controllers in because my um, my daughters actually still play the Nintendo 64. So. I won for five dollars, five US dollars, um, a pair of Nintendo 64 controllers. One's plain blue, and the other one's a blue with funny um, like camo marks on it. They both seem to work, and they'll be fine for work. So we should have played four-player uh, GoldenEye at my work on a Friday afternoon now, um, which I haven't had a chance to do. Probably could have done it um, yesterday, by the way, Saturday today. Now, we have more pickups still. So I said it really has been a big month of um, people I haven't seen for a long time dropping around and say, hey Tony, would you mind this stuff? So the next one is an absolutely massive box of PC and DOS, um, or PC DOS software. Um, not all of them have their boxes, um, but still there are you know, a large number of software tools and you never know when you are going to encounter the boxes at a later date. And we actually have some interesting addi additions to this. So first, we'll cut to me giving you a bit of a tour of what's in the box and we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so my um, long-term friend who's cleaning out his garage brought me around this big box here and it has this array of stuff. So what we'll do, we'll get rid of the box because we've taken everything out of the box. Mostly. So got some CD cases. Um, and we can have a look together. So there's quite an array 
of uh, different stuff here to save you from shaky cam I'm using it as a tripod there's just mounds of stuff so like I've started sorting it out so we have uh, original fallout fallout 2 system shock masters of Orion 2 which is a pretty cool game and I said some of these I do actually have but um, I mean I'll obviously check whether I still have the disc so this is th um, free space um, silent threat I'm not sure I have that one definitely had this one uh, free space the great war that's disc one and two in the case but that's one as an example that um, I may have lost the disc so there we go Grim Fandango the curse of monkey island and Majesty Gold Collection. Pretty cool things there. I have a few loose discs here. So this says it's the white label Fallout Collection. So I take it that is most of the Fallout games. This doesn't seem to be a case though. Civilization 4. Um, Dawn of War Dark Crusade. Now there are some Dawn of War games over there. Never know, might find some are missing their discs. And Arcanium uh, of Steamworks in Magic Obscura. Don't, not familiar with that one. We have this really nice copy of Riven, the sequel to Mist. It's in a special case, and everything seems to be there. So there's just oodles of stuff here. So some of these, most of this pile I have. So I have Baldur's Gate Tiles of the Sword Coast. Um, Pinball Madness. That looks pretty cool. Uh, Fighters Anthology. So that's got ATF, two ATF games and USNF. Those games can be quite good in their own right. Uh, Diablo, Oops. <laughs> Warcraft, Starcraft 2, Starcraft Expansion Set Brood War, the original Starcraft, so very cool pile that one, is it I've only really started sorting, so you've got Heroes 3 of Might and Magic Complete, there's also Heroes 3 Armageddon's Blade Expansion Pack, so that's probably also on that it is too. Heroes 4 and there's Heroes 5 one of those gold edition things that you find around lately. There's a Civilization 3 and um, we'll go to that. Oh, go through this part next. Sorry and there's a, there is a lot here. So we have Arcanum Original Axis and Allies, pretty cool. Heretic 2, so the original Heretic ran on the um, Doom or Quake engine, I think. Uh, Sanity Aikens Artifact, not familiar with that game, but that looks interesting. Interstate 76 Nitro Pack, some sort of a racing type game. Uh, Soulbringer. West Front, so another war game. So this particular person is right very heavily into his war gaming. Uh, heavy gear too, and that's what he's focusing on nowadays, his miniatures and his war gaming. Myth 2 Soul Blighter. Maximum Strategy, so we've got Tropico and Stronghold in that pack. Sydney's Alpha Centauri. I remember this game. I actually will probably have a go at playing that. Sydney's <laughs> uh, Gilliburg. The good old Railroad Tycoon 2. Sonic 3D Blast. A Sonic game for the PC. That's pretty cool. Now, this is a game that I did play back in the day. I still have my original copy. This is Panzer General. Really, really cool strategy war game. Um, this Legacy of Time box set with the really cool uh, um, cover. Journeyman Projects. 
So it has uh, Riven, Warlords 3, The Last Express, Take No Prisoners, Warbreeds and Extreme Warfare. So it's a collection of games. Uh, East Front 2. Rogue Spear, so it's a Rainbow Six game. And Zoo Tycoon. Um, so we've got a disc off the front of our magazine. Uh, Zoo Tycoon 2. Diablo 3. Just a sleeve with a number, no disc in it. Oh, cool. Is that the original Half Life on PC, is it? That's good. This is actually. Ah, it's in a King's Quest Master of Attorney case on the back, so that's a bit confused. Interesting. Well, that's definitely a Half Life disc in there. Um, it'll be interesting to give that a go. Right, 25 free games. Alright, moving right along. So we've got a bit of sheet here. So we have. Uh, World War II Fighters, uh, Shogun Total War, that's, they're supposed, Total War game is supposed to be pretty good. Uh, Majesty the Fantasy Kingdom Sim, MDK2, not familiar with that. Civilization 2, Test of Time. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer Stone, play that on other things. Seven Kingdoms, the Freight and Wars, sort of a strategy game. Battle Zone 2 Combat Simulator. Uh, no One Lives Forever. Oh, it's music tracks, I think. Okay, music tracks. Oh, an actual computer version of Risk. That's nice. Panzer General 2, sequel to a great game. We actually have two copies of oops, Diablo 3. Obviously bought from Special Bins and I forgot that they had already had a copy or something. Um, next pile we have The Great Battle. So I think these are a lot of scenario type discs. Close Combat. Apache Havoc. Something from EA Games and Lionhead Studios. I don't have my glasses on, so. Black and White. Is that the strategy game, Black and White? And she does have there and, and the key. Oh, there we go. Black and White. I remember Black and White. Um, 3D Home Architect, Harry Potter and Chamber of Secrets, Thief the Dark Project, another 3D Home Architect, Edge of Science, um, is that Wig Alley, Stratego, Age of Wonders, which has got Age of Wonders 1 and 2, Battles of Alexandra, so lots more battles. This, I think, this and the next pile next door. We've got heaps of these battles. Alexandra again. Disciple Stress, Sacred Lands. Battles of Hannibal. Battles of Hannibal. Prelude of Waterloo. Maybe all these were got in like a magazine series. Uh, Kingmaker, I do remember that vaguely. Maps the World series, so it's a bit of focus issue. Some copied stuff, don't worry about copied stuff. What's this one? History of the World, so a bit of normal stuff. A few more copied things, we won't worry about copied things. Right, some younger kids stuff, animals and things. Alright, we'll go back over now. So this is really, truly the first time I'm looking through this properly. So we have Assassin's Creed. We've noticed. <clears throat> uh, 
Age of Empires Collector's Edition, which also feels... Oh no, it's in there. there you go. That's pretty cool. I might already have that though. Uh, Far Cry and Ghost Recon complete. Um, oh, Resident Evil 4 and Dark Messiah. I, I mean, I've played Resident Evil 4 on the, on the PS2. And I didn't actually know there was a PC version. Command and Conquer 3, Tiberian Wars, that's a good game. Excellent game in the Command and Conquer series. We have Sims 2, which I think my daughter's already picked up. Medal of Honor Airborne, I'm actually not sure I've played that Medal of Honor game. Oh, another Heroes game, so I might have Magic 6. There. Uh, Need for Speed, Most Wanted. Rise of Nations, I haven't heard of that one. Another strategy game. We've got another Middle of Honor game, Total War. Well, medieval, not Middle of Honor. Uh, Mist Masterpiece Edition, so a re release of Mist. Heroes of Might of Magic 5. Should all these Heroes games on? Uh, Neverwinter Nights. It's a re release version. Very good game, Neverwinter Nights. I do probably have that in a digital collection already. Civilization 4. Lots of these obviously bought in EB Games specials. Uh, Crimson Skies. Oh, here you go, I haven't played this. Here's the original The Witcher. Defcon, everybody dies. Uh, Crisis, Maximum Edition. Wonder whether I have anything capable of running that. The good old Dragon Age Origins. Uh, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl. Uh, at Dawn of War, Dark Crusade. Let me guess. No disc. We have. Reunited a loose disc, so I'll fix that in a minute. That's cool. I actually that that those games, the Dawn of War series, are actually really good RTS strategy games. So 3D Home Architect, no disc, and I believe that belongs with one of those over there. Um, Combat Mission Two: Brossa de Berlin, so a war game of some speed. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. Star Wars Jedi Knight Academy. It's pretty cool, even if it's a re-release version. And empty case. And another empty case. Put this there. Grab those. We have Combat Missions Africa. Majesty 2. Fallout Collection. There we go. That's another one where we have, oh, I reckon that belongs there. There we go. So, so that's got Fallout and Fallout 2 and Fallout Tactics on it. Sorry, I'm not holding that very well. It's very cheap. Um, <clears throat> it's a nice copy of StarCraft 2. Awesome game, absolutely love StarCraft. And yet there is more. Here. So, Dawn of War Winter Assault. Um, Dawn of War Manual belongs in something. And a map. Oh, there we go. Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition. This is where those maps belong. Dawn of War. It really is a good game, and, oh cool, Neverwinter Nights 2. I'm not sure I've got the separate Neverwinter Nights titles. Now there are a couple more things. So I'm not going to go through copy this. So we have a language starter. 
we have Harry Potter Lego, the first one. Uh, Dungeon Siege, I definitely actually have this one, Legends of Arana. Brothers in Armed, Earned in Blood. And Prince of Persia, Warrior Within. Now there are some more magazine discs, which I'll just go through quickly, and a pile of DVDs, uh, blank DVDs that have been used. So this is just magazine discs, I'll just quickly flip through these. There's some cool stuff on there. some interesting things on those. Um, actually mixed in this, funnily enough, there's a copy of Sims 2 for the GameCube. And, going back here, two boxed games. So we have... Sorry, so it's High Command and an expansion, I believe. So this is Hordes, the one I held up to start with, and this is uh, War Machine. So it's a card strategy game. Um, which we'll probably um, have a look through and I'll play with my, um, my daughters. So, um, a very, very huge lot of stuff. Um, so very much appreciated to my friend Nick for dropping these off and um, <clears throat> I'll have to, I mean, I, <clears throat> I do have a legacy PC that I use for older stuff um, but I may actually look at making a proper legacy gaming PC because I've been tidying up a whole lot of old electronics and I do actually have quite a few add-on cards so I might be able to make a reasonably decent machine and set it up <clears throat> with a bit of recording gear and then probably play through some of these old games which you'd be really interested in doing. Alright, so as you can see there was a tremendous lot of titles in that box and I've actually gone through after I recorded that little bit and um, gone through my collection app and I actually didn't have quite a large number of the games that I showed you um, in specific forms. I mean there are some duplicates because I've bought some collections of games that have some of the singular games but I've still kept quite a lot of those items and um, tidied them all up and put them over in my um, PC area over there which is not a very good, very well displayed area because everything's double stacked but at least it's put away and neat. And I found some interesting surprises. So very early last month my friend Brendan, who I've mentioned on the channel before, when he dropped round he said look I found this in the tip shop and I think he paid a dollar or even fifty cents for it and it was uh, an Axis and Ally box. Now, those who were observant in the video that I showed, there was an Axis and Ally CD in there, and yes, it actually fits and matches with this box. So maybe this is actually, um, my friend actually went and chucked out the boxes for his games um, earlier on. So I'm going to have to scour more of the tip shops, and I might be able to find some of the boxes, the empty boxes that match some of the games that I have. And suffice to that, probably about six months ago, I can't remember, we'd have to go back through my videos to have a look. I found this wonderful tin, which is Civilization 3, and it's the limited edition tin. And yes, once again, those who are very observant will have noticed that there was a Civilization, holding it upside down there, Civilization 3 CD in there. So we have completed a special edition Civilization 3. So it shows that. Sometimes, uh, you know, it is possible to get these orphaned objects united back together again to make complete ones. And that one's a wonderful um, item to have as a display space and a very good game. Um, there was actually several civilizations, so Civilization 2, Civilization 3 and Civilization 4 amongst that lot as well. I haven't played Civilization for ages, but I know another one of my friends um, one of my best friends from when I was growing up, he's a mad nutter on Civilization, and he probably, knowing him, still plays it today. And there is more. So, fellow uh, Press Play on Tape podcast member, Aaron, 
um, was having a bit of a clean out and he basically encountered a gentleman who um, was pretty much giving away his Apple II and his Amiga bits and pieces um, and with it was a box of programming notes and manuals which Aaron thought I might be interested in. Um, so um, I have already pre-trimmed this down because there was a whole lot of other stuff that was mainly um, associated with um, he obviously had a very large collection of copied software um, and a lot of it to do was what was on that so the remaining stuff of which I've kept to have a bit more of a look at let's go and have a look at now right so here is the consolidation of the two boxes of manuals and notes that um, my fellow podcast mate Aaron dropped off to me um, I have already gone through it and um, trimmed it down to what I believe is useful to keep. So there are some actual Amiga manuals here. So we've got Amiga Release 2 getting started. Um, I believe we've got a couple of copies of this already. So this is the enhancer software. Amiga DOS version 1.3, Kickstarter 1.3, Workbench 1.3 and Extras 1.3 that came with um, Amiga 1, uh, 500s I think. Then we have a nice Amiga DOS manual, second edition, which is pretty cool. I don't think I've got that particular one. Looks well loved. And then this nice um, binder type using the system software workbench, which I haven't seen before either. So it's actually a um, leaf binder with lots of information in it. So that's very cool. Um, now we're into the um, other stuff that was with it. So this is AMAX Macintosh emulator. So this is only a manual, of course. Um, and then this is a thing called Can Do. It does look like so. There's the original owner's name there. It does look like it's an original thing, rather than something. That this person printed out and then bound himself. Um, I'm not really sure what can do does. Um, right, so it's a programming environment. So um, I suppose it allows you, allows you to um, you know program stuff without um, resorting to C. So. I've kept that one out of interest. Now also, we have a whole lot of Amos stuff. So Amos was another game creator software. Now it is mostly photocopies and things. Um, but I thought it was worthwhile uh, keeping it just for the time being until I have a better chance to have a look through it. But I do have one Amos thing already. Um, next, some more notes. Um, now these are bits and pieces, but there are quite a few some more Amos stuff here. So it, it's basically more Amos programming things, with, but there are a few listings and things like that in there that I wouldn't mind just going through and having a bit of a play with. So I thought I'd keep that one. There were a whole lot of folders that basically just uh, were indexes of um, the um, copied um, disk that the person had as well and this is probably one of the more interesting bunches of things so he was a, obviously a very organized person and obviously worked somewhere where the punch cards were available and there are a number of uh, listings and things in here and these are all for the Apple II so I decided to keep um, all of this to have a bit more of a look through but this is all, and there's even um, um, some handwritten 6502 assembly there. There's assembly directories. So I don't think this person you know, worked in commercial software development. But I do believe they had a go at um, trying to work some things out themselves. So these are all from the Apple II day. They're obviously fascinated with adventure games. Um, So this is actually Star Trek. 
sorry, this is probably not coming out very clear. Um, another one here, so Atari notes. So interesting enough, I believe they may have had an Atari as well, but you see Temple of Ashfire there. So I believe he got games where he can get the source code so that he's working out how to play music, um, the commands for Temple of Ashfire. But there's actual the listing, Temple of Ashfire. So he's pulling it apart, I believe, to try and make his own um, version of the game. And there's maps and stuff like that in there. So I find this sort of, being a developer myself, I find this sort of stuff really, really interesting. Um, and I'm going to keep this for a little while, just to have a look through and have a bit of a place. But this is all, all Apple II stuff, which I've had quite a bit of fun playing with lately. It's all in there, and I believe he was trying to make his own adventure game. So... Um, I'll have a play over that for a while and see what I can come up with it. So once again, as you can see, there's quite a few interesting things there. Obviously, the most interested in the um, the Amiga manuals that I didn't have, uh, but also I actually quite find uh, fascinating those original programming notes for the Apple II. Um, the AML stuff, yeah, less so. Um, I may have a bit of a play with that, and I might keep that very long because I do have one real AMOS manual and. Who wants photocopies of, you know, um, of old, old manuals? It's better to have the real thing, so I probably will dump those just for space. Um, but some of the other notes and things, I'll happily have a bit of a play and have a look through. And you never know, there might be a uh, lost adventure game there that this person was writing that I might be able to get going. Um, and I am quite fascinated with that sort of thing, so it'll be interesting to give it a try. All right, so in closing, um, also just the other day, uh, sat down with Aaron from Press Play on Tape and Cameron, who I met um, physically at, at um, PAX um, uh, earlier in the month, and we recorded another episode of Press Play on Tape. And this one is dear to my heart because it was specifically on the original Spit Video Machines. Um, and of course, I you know I could have talked for even longer than we did, but please go and check out the episode. We're trying to do these more regular. Uh, they actually, there was one another one recorded actually at PAX, but my plane was late, so I missed it by half an hour. So I didn't get to go on that one with all the lovely professional audio gear. Um, and we have another one planned, which we're going to do in a couple of weeks as well. Um, and, uh, and, and we've got properly planned out, um, we're planning out episodes a bit more in, the, in, in advance, so that um, we can quickly get together and record them. And I actually really do enjoy the um, Press Play and Tape podcast because we're talking about old retro computers and software and um, we, we've done quite well at getting some quite uh, good guests that are uh, appropriate to the topic at hand. Um, and, and of course for that last one, of course technically I'm the guest because I'm the person who wrote most of the software for the original Spectre video back in the day and it was just great fun talking about it. All right, I hope everybody is well and enjoying their retro and modern games. Um, I'm Electric Adventures, thanks to all my subscribers, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.